A word of warning there. Don't restrict your research to websites like Answers in Genesis. They won't give you the full picture. They actually admit to having a biblical bias. Now, back to Mark's comment again. It's hard to have faith in something that seems to change all the time, and that also has people backing it that lie about their findings, brackets, i.e. the discovery of Lucy, the Miller apparatus, the list goes on, close brackets. It just lacks credibility to me. Lucy is the skeleton of an Australopithecus found in Africa. Many more have been found since. They appear to be like what we would expect our ancient ancestors to be like, about halfway between ourselves and the common ancestor of modern chimpanzees and us. I presume, by Miller apparatus, Mark is referring to the Miller-Urey experiment, in which a chemical concoction, thought to resemble the early oceans, was subjected to electric current like a lightning strike. It's worth reading up about the experiment and what it did and did not demonstrate. I would encourage Mark to be careful about who he is accusing of lying, without substantiating his accusation. Now, back to his long comment. The Bible, on the other hand, is only denied by people and natural science. Brackets. This, of course, discounts the possibility of the supernatural. Close brackets. Because they don't understand it. We have to be careful to clarify who is denying the Bible in its entirety and those, like myself, who accept that some of it is probably true. I admit that I don't understand the supernatural. It seems just like magic to me. I've never seen anything supernatural, and my tentative conclusion is that it's not real. Furthermore, if something seems at first to be supernatural and is then understood by science, it becomes natural. Mark continues. It can't be rationalised, so it must not be true. It's consistent throughout. Prophecies from the Old Testament come true in the New Testament, which are written hundreds of years apart from each other. I think that non-believers think that because they can't wrap their human minds around some of the things in the Bible, then it must be impossible. I think that a lot of believers can't wrap their minds around the idea that the writers of what we now call the New Testament had copies of what we now call the Old Testament to refer to. There's a reason Terminator 3 is internally consistent with the original movie and Terminator 2 Judgment Day. I'm not claiming to know for certain that the Bible is fiction, but it seems at least possible. So when believers bring up fulfilled prophecies, I don't find it particularly surprising or convincing. Mark's comment continues. Once again, if it can't be rationalised, then it can't happen. That's where the greatness and powerlessness of God comes from. That's the whole point. I assume that predictive text or typing is responsible for the word powerlessness. All the other Christians I've spoken to insist that their God is all-powerful. I just wish that evolutionists would just admit that evolution is a faith as much as anything else. You believe in something that nobody really knows for sure ever happened. I'm assuming here that when you say evolutionist, you're referring to scientifically literate non-believers. The evidence indicates that evolution is true and that the universe is very old. All you have is evidence of things you see today that you interpret a certain way. We interpret the evidence in the best way humans have come up with so far. It's called the scientific method. Much of that same data could just as well be interpreted as being the result of a creator. This is correct. Millions of Bible believers accept evolution and cosmology and argue that those are the ways in which God went about the creation process. So what it comes down to is whether or not the Bible is true, and my faith makes me think it is. I'm sure that some of the Bible is true, but it seems to me like the stories have been embellished and in some cases misinterpreted. I'm not so sure that your faith trumps reason, though. 
I don't really understand why that frustrates so many people and causes such hate. Personally, I have very little hate in me. Life's too short. But there certainly is a lot of animosity between some believers and some atheists. Keep in mind that many ex-Christians feel anger towards the religion that controlled them for so long. It really seems like the result of sin, which begs the question, how does evolution explain why there's so much hate and death and fighting in the world? Just because of human nature? We all have a natural instinct to survive. When we're stressed out, we're more likely to be on attack mode. I don't think we're all that different from the other animals, but we have a greater capacity for good and evil. We have the largest brains out of the primates, and we have the ability to imagine what dying is like. We also have the ability to guess where we came from, and on the basis that religions and mythology have many different accounts for this, it's safe to assume that they can't all be right. If we are evolving to be more complex, more rational, and all around better organisms, then why does our world seem to be having more problems? Why do things, including life, seem to be breaking down and actually becoming less complex, rather than more complex? These are not easy questions to grapple with. There's nothing in evolutionary theory which concludes that we have to be getting more complex and more rational. The process is gradual and complexity arose from simplicity over a very long period of time, according to the theory. The Bible is clear on that. It's because of sin. God gave us free will from the beginning of time. He didn't create a population of robots that did his every last command. Because of that, unfortunately, man fell into sin. Therefore there's death and hate and this discussion and debate we are having now. Some would argue that the God of the Bible does want his people to be like robots, obeying and worshipping him continually. But I'm not convinced that any gods are real, let alone the Abrahamic one. I agree there's plenty wrong in this world, but it doesn't seem to match up very well with biblical sin, in my view. Sin seems to mean disobeying God's commandments, some of them are worth disobeying, such as killing adulterers and those who gather sticks on the Sabbath. But that's a whole can of worms in itself, whether to interpret the Bible to mean that such punishments should still apply after Jesus or not. Obviously, most of the people following this particular thread are going to disagree with me, but tell me that God couldn't exist based on facts rather than our own human understanding and reasoning. I'm not here to argue that God doesn't exist. I don't think it's something we can know for sure, but we inevitably get bogged down trying to figure out what exactly God is when we go down that avenue. There's nothing substantial. God is greater than what our minds can ever understand. You may well be right, but it seems like you are presenting your beliefs as if they were established beyond any reasonable doubt. I'm not so sure they are. You can't disprove him. You can only interpret facts in a way that try and prove your ideas whether you actually are right or not. The only thing I would like to add is that I'm not so much trying to prove I'm right as to encourage others to examine their beliefs more closely, especially when they conflict with science. <laughs>